U.S. manufacturing technology orders in April were horrible. But things will get better eventually, and we're going to give you three things to keep an eye on to help you understand when things are going to start to get better. Hi, I'm Pat McGibbon, and I'm here to talk about the U.S. Manufacturing Technology Orders Report for April. April orders were $226 million. Now, that's uh, 26% down from where they were in March and 39% down from where they were in April of 2019. When you take the first four months of 2020, that's a total of $1 billion, $97 million, which is off 28% from where we were in the first four months of 2019. And this paints a, relative, a relatively dim picture of the April market. And unfortunately, it's, I think it signals that um, we haven't reached the bottom of this uh, recession. In other words, we haven't got the trough to start seeing things going back up. That's probably not going to happen until later in the summer, uh, maybe even early fall. But we'll get back to that in a second. Let's talk about some of the bright things in the report. Both uh, the Northeast and South Central regions actually saw April orders larger in dollar volume than they were in March. But unfortunately, all six regions' dollar volumes were less than they were in April of 2019. Talk about some of the largest markets. Our largest market continues to be, by dollar volume, the job shop industry. Um, but the metalworking industry and the engines and turbine sector climbed into the second and third spot above aerospace. The strongest markets, those that grew the fastest in April, were the industrial machinery, railroad equipment, and commercial service sector industry. Now, unfortunately, talking about the ones who had the hardest April, auto industry led that. I don't think I've seen uh, a poorer month for the auto industry since the beginning of the 1980s followed by the oil field and gas equipment uh, sector, and then finally orders from the agricultural equipment industry were on um, a long-term low. Still, um, going back to some good news, cancellations in April were only half of what they were in January, and uh, that was a time before the market was really impacted by coronavirus. Going to the job shop industry and talking to some people in that industry, uh, they've shared with us that the medical equipment industry has been one of their best customers over the course of the last quarter. Unfortunately, only a small portion of that activity has been in, uh, related to sur surgical tools or joint replacements, which is where uh, most of the demand for new capital equipment that uh, works metal comes from. So it's uh, even though it's up for them, it's not had a dramatic impact on us. The next best industries, aerospace, the space program, renewable energy, and the energy distribution uh, projects. Over the course of last month, talking to people in the USMTO program has been a rare bird I've been able to find that can say he made a profit in uh, April. And it's easy to see why. Given the dramatic drop in March, uh, from, from March into April of uh, the dollar volume and the unit count, and the eight-point differential between dollars and units, it suggests that uh, there's been some significant pressure on margins during the course of the last uh, 30 days. Also, in talking to most people, they were suggesting that uh, their, uh, the customers are all eager about quotations, that they're talking about the, the opportunities that the fall uh, is going to bring to them. Um, but their primary focus, the customer's primary focus, is on uh, preserving cash and maintaining liquidity which has made negotiations very, very tough. And many builders uh, have shared that they feel like they're playing musical chairs with their supply chain and with their customers on who holds the receivables for the materials, installed machines, and components that are going to OEMs. Everyone wants to delay their payments to creditors while pushing to get paid on time themselves. Someone is going to get caught holding overdue receivables. This game has a negative impact on the amount of receivables that can be leveraged for lines of credits and loans and poses a significant business risk as we move further into this downturn. Clearly, there are some challenge times ahead, so um, I always try to look for some good news. And I think I found some in a meeting I recently attended. Uh, I participate in a quarterly roundtable of 40 economists who work for other industries to discuss issues that have an impact on business and to share some of the trends we see in our own markets. Holly Wade of the National Federation of Independent Businesses made one of uh, the pre presentations at our last meeting. Now, her association's members are any small businesses, whether it's manufacturing, retail, farming, whatever, and they have hundreds of their members who are in manufacturing. 
They conduct monthly surveys on business conditions, and I found the data from their May survey both interesting and heartening. What this data represents is that nearly 25% of the respondents have had at least one job opening each month. This is big because most of the members only have 10 to 25 employees. And so even in a pandemic, their members are seeking specific skills they need to weather this crisis. My other favorite slide from the quarters meeting was the Beer Association. Go figure. But what this data slide says is that the Irish celebrate St. Patrick's Day even harder when they're locked in. Go imagine. But on a serious note, Mark Killian of Oxford Economics started off his May 27th presentation of the uh, manufacturing technology market by saying that this recovery will be irritatingly slow. The numbers suggest we haven't seen the bottom yet and will not likely see it until midsummer or maybe early fall. So that means that July, July, uh, July or August is probably when the consumables might see some improvement starts. And it won't um, be probably until August or September that the uh, capital equipment people in our industry will begin to see the bottom and some kind of uh, slowing of the rate of decline. Of course, um, by the end of the year, Oxford expects, assuming no double whammy with the virus, that uh, 2020 will end 51% down from 2019 with respect to orders. However, they're looking for an 84% rebound in orders in 2021. Good news, right? Well, let me do the math for you. If you go 51% down in 2020 and then go back up 84% in 2021, that still leaves you 10% below where you were in 2019. It's going to be a long and irritatingly slow recovery. So as you take in the news on the economy, be careful not to let presentation of data dazzle you. Everyone wants this recession to be over, and sometimes that leads them to overstate the good news. As an example, recent reports on employment touted that the big gain in the number of rehires, new hires, a huge jump in employment numbers. But progress is always relative. We still have a long way to get back to even with respect to employment. As these types of events have a way of changing the world and becoming de uh, defining moments in people's lives, I don't have a doubt that we will see signs of some type of improvement before the end of the year. But the good news may be that the rate of orders of falling will stay negative. In other words, they'll continue to be worse than they were the year before. But uh, on a positive note, they'll be less negative each month as we go forward. Along the way to better times, there are some monthly measures to keep an eye on. Capacity utilization. It's a good measure of when your customers are getting busy and may need additional capacity. Over 74 means that uh, some of the manufacturers in that sector are already making uh, capital equipment investments. When it gets to be over 77, that means most of the people in that industry are making expansion investments. Second uh, place to look is the Gardner Business Index. Now we all know that over 50 means that manufacturing is expanding. But I will tell you that on the way from 40 back towards 50, that when you get to 47, 48, and 49, I think it's also a signal that good times are just around the corner. Finally, savings rates. It's a little bit of an all ball one, but it's really good around recessions, and here's why. Whenever we go into a recession, the rate of savings uh, increases almost exponentially. It goes up almost straight up. Uh, and then as the recession begins to end, you start to see savings rates begin to bend, even before you see it in a lot of other numbers. To flatten out, you know, and uh, what this means is that customers, I mean consumers, are beginning to buy and that businesses are beginning to invest. So uh, while there's not a really, a lot of really good ones you can get easy, uh, I would suggest that you go Google Fred Federal Reserve. Fred, as in Fred Flintstone, Federal Reserve. They'll take you to their data bank. There'll be a search box up there. Put in the word savings and there'll be a whole list of indexes and dollar volumes to look at with respect to savings. And uh, I would suggest maybe picking out one that's monthly because you can get a 30 day look every, you know, once every 30 days, get a good look at what's going on. And uh, one of the ones I always keep an eye on is the savings and small time deposits. Um, it's a dollar volume. Um, and again, rate of change is what you want to capture, not just uh, the dollar volumes. Uh, you'll notice, like I said, that uh, it'll begin to flatten out through the other recessions uh, just before the recession was over. And finally, 
keep an eye on AMT News because we put uh, our top 10 indicators into there frequently. And that'll give you a sense about what we're thinking about uh, when the turnaround will start or when the trough will get here. So if that doesn't satisfy your curiosity and needs with respect to the economy, uh, send me an email. Um, I'll see what I can do. So until next month, be careful and stay safe.